Hello, hello! For the past few weeks, I've been doing an interesting hunt called curry hunting over on Twitch. Uh, I wanted to do something special for my final SBQ target, and when I found out about Pokemon appearing off of curries, I was like, I kind of need this in my life. Uh, there was no like confirmation on whether they could be shiny or not, so for the longest time, I kind of just, I don't know, hoped it was doable. Uh, but by the time that I actually started doing the hunt, it turned out it was possible because one of my friends told me they had found a shiny of it. Uh, recently a YouTube video also surfaced, there will definitely be a link uh, to that down in the description below as well. So like, big hacking pog, right? Big pog. Um, I, I was like immediately interested, kind of caught by the hunt, and hopefully I've kind of caught your attention as well. Because uh, I'm right now going to give you a tutorial on how to do curry hunting. Uh, just one quick note before I start a tutorial, um, these encounters are really slow. It's also a lot of RNG, so in a way, I honestly I think the best thing to compare them to would be like the Gen 8 Romer hunts, but just about the route resets, just, I don't know, there's a lot of RNG involved, so every single encounter is different pretty much. Um, yeah, let's get to the tutorial a bit. Uh, the setup for this hunt isn't the easiest, but once you're done with the setup, um, you never have to do it again, no matter what you do in your game. So once you've got it set up, you're good to go. You can even swap around routes if you really want to, if you want to like make it interesting for yourself, refreshing up your spawns a bit. Um, you definitely can do it that way, just, you know, swap routes and set up your camp, you're good to go, you can start hunting again. Um, to speed up the entire hunting process and setup process, I would definitely recommend that you only have three Pokemon on your team during both the setup and the actual hunt, as, as I said. It, it just speeds things up quite a bit. Um, the two main pointers you need to get curry spawns are for sure that your Pokemon need to be friends with you and with each other. And right now I'm going to explain you how you uh, get that done. So your Pokemon need to be your friends, and the easiest way to do this is honestly just to use your in-game team. Um, usually those Pokemon will actually quite like you already without having to put uh, in too much effort. And yeah, it just again makes the setup a little easier. The setup itself is quite long as you will see uh, in this video. But again, once you got it going, you're Gucci. Um, if you want to check your Pokemon's friendship towards you, you have to go to Hammerlock City, or is it just Hammerlock? I'm actually not quite sure. There will be an image on the screen displaying where you have to go. And you need to enter the house right up the Pokemon Center. Uh, the little boy gives you the following message, then your Pokemon are your best friends. Good job! You can get going to the next step. Uh, if not, the easiest way to gain your Pokemon's friendship in this game is just to spend time with them in camp, uh, play them, make curries with them, and before you know it, you'll be the best of friendos. On a little side note though, after the friendship tracker tells you that you're best friends, your Pokemon will get a best buddy mark. So if your Pokemon has this mark already, uh, you're also just good to go, you know, you don't have to check um, with the, the little pal here. But again, if you're not sure, it doesn't hurt to just go to Hammerlock and uh, go talk to the kid. If you use um, plus friendship berries like the Grappa Berry, Hottendew Berry, Kalpsy Berry, Pomag Berry, Koala Berry or a Tomato Berry, in your curries, uh, your friendship will also be boosted without lowering their EVs, like how feeding would do. Um, so honestly, just make lots of curries. It's a nice way to, you know, understand the whole curry making process itself as well. And yeah, that's just what you kind of want to get going. Get, get that friendship level up. Become friends with your Pokemans, you know? The next step is probably the one that takes the longest to set up for a lot of people. Um, so f as I said earlier, for curry Pokemon to appear, your Pokemon need to be friends with each other as well. And once again, the best way to do this is just by playing uh, with them, make curries with them, make sure, you know, you're doing it at the same time as the previous uh, setup, if you haven't done that yet. Um, yeah, for me personally, I just used the fetch toy and I just kind of swiped that left and right, let both of my Pokemon touch it at the same time. You can actually call two Pokemon towards you at the same time, which I find quite nice. Um, and once you see that they are starting to get hungry, you just make them some curries and your your feed them and you can just repeat the whole process until uh, the following message appears after talking to both pokemon at the same time sometimes you have to spam a for it a little bit um yeah it's just i don't know for some reason the message doesn't always pop up first things first but it isn't too bad just you know keep at it usually this takes about an hour an hour and a half if you're at like complete zero but sometimes if you use camp a lot during your play for as well um it might take you a little faster once again, as I said earlier in the video, uh, the process takes a lot less time if you only do it with free Pokemon. Um, if you have a whole team of six, yeah, go look at the setup. <laughs> I warned you, I warned you. Uh, if you want to lower the overall setup time for this hunt, you can also just make loads of curries without a whole playing feature. Um, that way you will boost both your Pokemon's friendship towards uh, you and towards each other in one big go. Once again, use the friendship berries, 
uh, if you want to quickly recap on that if you do scroll back into the video there uh, i did mention all of the berries you could use in your curries to make your pokemon become friends with you and with each other at the same time once your Pokemon are friendly towards both you and each other, you're pretty much good to start hunting. The only final hurdle that some people might have is that you still need items and berries. Uh, technically, the class of the curry doesn't affect your curry spawn rate as long as it's above military class. Um, I don't know if we have any footage of me getting a curry spawn with a Wobbuffet class curry. So just for the sake of this tutorial, I would all definitely recommend to at least make military class curries. Um, so if you really want to, you can technically just buy 999 Orin, Cherry, or Pache Berries from the berry shop in Wet Herds. Uh, it is just above the station, so just north of the station. Very easy to find, very cheap as well. So if you don't really care about your, uh, your curry class, go right ahead with this. Um, however, if you want to aim for higher class curries, I'm talking like a Raja class, even some Charizard class curries here and there, uh, you definitely want to approach this uh, part of the setup in a different way. Um, yeah, and the wild area, you actually get a lot of berry trees with rare berries, and those rare berries is what you're gonna need, um, to get high class curries. Honestly, the biggest factor is that you just use rare berries, and usually you'll, like, without even having to try, you already get Copperaja class curries. Um, I know there's a lot of berry trees on other routes as well. Usually these won't give you rare berries, so I personally would just say, um, that you just avoid the berry trees on the routes. It doesn't hurt if you do include them in your setup, but I personally would not recommend it. The setup overall already takes quite some time, so I personally steer clear of this. Um, my personal approach here to get loads of berries is to look for a map of the wild area with all the berry trees on it, and um, then save in front of a berry tree. The image of the map will be on screen right now as well. Uh, you can always just pause the video and like note them down or something or again google yourself google's your friend guys <laughs> definitely when it comes to shiny hunting lots of the time you'll find lots of uh val valuable information on google um and yeah what i personally did was just go to a berry tree save in front of it uh shake the tree till you get at least 10 berries and then go away save go to the next tree and just repeat that process till you've gone through all the berry trees in the wild area of course you know if you don't want to have you know a bazillion cool berries that give you Charizard class curries. You just want to have like one. Um, go right ahead, I would say. But I personally, I I ran through the entire wild area once and shook all the berry trees, so I got at least ten berries out of them. And that's how I'm personally. Uh, that's the amount of berries sorry, that I'm personally using in this hunt. Uh, I've only gotten to my Orem berries a few times in my hunt so far. I've been hunting it for about three weeks now. I've seen about three hundred encounters. So. Yeah, I, I definitely would recommend this approach. It just, I don't know, saves you some time. Um, there's also uh, a lot of different ways to get items to your curries. I'm sure that some people have just not bothered picking up any items whatsoever. Um, you can either go to, like, go online on the Switch and just run into the wild area and approach lots of, like, random, I want to call them NPCs, but I do believe they're in some sort of way or form linked to other people being online in the wild area at the same time. Uh, if you talk to these characters, they will give you um, random items. Uh, if you specifically want high class items, which don't necessarily help that much with your curry class, but in some scenarios it can actually affect it a little bit. Uh, you can also go to the camper guy that's outside of uh, Hammerlock, or like outside of the Dragon Head uh, in the wild area. And he sells uh, a lot of ingredients, some of them rarer than others. And uh, usually at least one of these options um, would be considered the rare category. I do believe these also change from day to day, so maybe if you don't get anything that you want one day, uh, you could either try and travel or just wait till the next day and go check up and uh, go check up on him again. Um, yeah, you can just buy a bunch of things for him without having to grind, pretty much. Uh, to check the rarity of your items or berries, uh, you go into your bag and you navigate towards their respective subcategories. Then you click X and you choose sort by type. Now the items and berries that will be um, most common will be up and up at the top and the rarest ones will be up at the bottom so you basically just sorted your berries by their typing and the next step is deciding your target um curry spawns are pretty much the encounters you would usually get in the exclamation mark patches as i would personally call them i know some people also just refer to them as random encounters that works too it's in these like little patches with an exclamation mark um that you will find um encounters that will also spawn in uh your curry hunt um go to your favorite informative pokemon site and check out which spawns you can get on each route 
I can completely ignore the percentages actually because these are spread uh, evenly. So to put it into simple words, every spawn has the same encounter rate, which makes curry hunting a really good way to hunt like super rare targets like I'm doing myself, for example, um, the the 2%, I believe, 2% Stone Junior, 5% Doramaka, uh, both of them spawn quite often in my hunt. Uh, I do also want to add here that the wild area does not give you curry spawns. I personally believe it has to do with the change of spawns depending on the weather and that being too hard to code into the game. Um, so if you want to curry hunt, make sure you're not doing it in the wild area. That's like, I should have probably added that at the start, but don't don't curry hunt in the wild area, guys. It won't work, please. If I see any comments about it, I'm sure I'll tell you like, oh, please, please don't do it in the wild area. There's a lot of cool targets in them, but sadly, this hunt is just not possible there. Um, yeah. So, to basically get your spawn rate, you just divide 100 by the amount of spawns you find on your route. For example, I'm hunting a Route 10. Um, there you can get six possible spawns, which is Storm General, Galarian, Darumaka, Vanillish, Beartick, and Obama Snow. If we just divide 100 by 6, we get about 16.67, which means every encounter I can get is pretty much a 16% spawn. A little bit of side information before you start a hunt. This hunt actually gets affected by the mark charm, as every single encounter you get will have the curry mark. So if you have finished the Isle of Armor, and you've gotten the mark charm, uh, this is definitely gonna help out big time with this hunt. I'm not saying you can't get encounters without the mark charm, I am personally also hunting without the mark charm, but your encounters are definitely a bit faster if you do have it. Um, I'd say your average encounters per curry goes from about 1 to 5 without the mark charm, to about 1 in 3 with the mark charm. Of course these are just averages, um, sometimes encounters will take a little longer. I am also not saying that, and at the end of your hunt, if you do the maths, your um, encounter rate and curry rate will be exactly 1 in 3. The shinies you can find for this method will actually have star sparkles. Just like the fossils and the spawns in the fire type gym, you can actually hunt in the fire type gym. Uh, I will link the video to that in the description as well. Uh, it's pretty cool, you can get, you know, Sizzlypede, um, Litwick or Vulpix from that. Pretty cool shinies, pretty cool shinies that you can get with star sparkles. Why not, right? Um, there will also be a video of somebody getting uh, the curry shiny, as I mentioned earlier in the video in the description. I'll make sure to like link all of them properly. Make sure that you know which link goes to which video. Um, at the moment, nothing is known about whether or not this hunt is affected by the charm. Sally, I don't know any data miners. I know quite a bit of people, but I don't have any uh, any data miner friends. But if anyone out there does um, have data miner friends, or if you're a data miner yourself, you want to look into curry hunting, and whether or not the shiny charm affects it or not. Feel free to DM me on any of my social media. Um, they're plugged in the description. You can always just tell me in the YouTube comment section as well. I'll definitely be down to reach out to you, see the uh, visual proof. And yeah, I'll make sure to pin it in the comments if I do eventually find out whether this gets affected by the shiny charm or not. Um, now that you've finished your setup, you're completely done. All you have to do is start making curries. You just keep on making them until you get an encounter and then you reset. At least that's what I personally do. Technically, you don't have to reset after every curry encounter, but I personally do it to just preserve my berries and my items. Um, you can also just, as I said, keep on going if you have the resources for it. Um, as I mentioned earlier, higher class curries don't affect your spawn rates, but it does feel nicer to me personally to get them. Uh, in case you're not sure how to make your curries, I'll give you a little tutorial here. If not, I'll probably also put a time skip in the video so you can just get to the end of the video, right? Um, step one for high class curries is definitely using berries, as I mentioned it before. Step two is getting the flame to be the right size. To do this, spam ZR and A at two different rhythms. Basically, the game will register as that you spamming the A button twice as fast, basically, as it would be if you would just normally spam just the A button. It'll make the fan go really fast. Um, I have two ways of holding the controller here. Uh, both of them work. Personally, I prefer the thumb one, where both uh, of my thumbs are on the Z, R, and A button. So you can spam that way. It gives you a little bit more power. So I would definitely recommend doing it that way, but it is a little uncomfortable to hold. So, I mean, maybe if you just want to get a Charizard class curry from here, here and there, you know, you can just do that method every once in a while. Um, yeah, the best way to check if you're doing this raid is to check uh, the music notes that your Pokemon will show while you're finding the flame. If the little music note pops up twice, then your flame is the right size for Charizard class curry. Step 3 is stirring the pot. Uh, it's better to go too fast and too slow. We have personally, I, I have a few of my friends as well that are doing this hunt. We have personally concluded that even if you spill a lot, your curry will be more likely 
to become a Charizard class. If you do it too fast, then if you're going too slow, then usually they will give you the Copper Roger class. So if you want Charizard Curries, sort that, that as fast as possible. I'm not saying you should spill all the time, but if you're scared, you're gonna go um, too slow. It's honestly a bit better to go a little too fast. Now you put your heart into it. Aim for the middle between the dark and light green. And if everything goes correctly, after this, you should have a Charizard class curry now. If not, try again. Sometimes the game bullies you a bit. It's also, I think, a little bit of RNG here and there. Uh, I personally, I don't know. At the start of my hunt, I didn't get a lot of Charizard curries. By now, I do get them quite often. I even get them randomly without even trying very hard. If you follow all these steps, you'll 100% of the time have a Cup of Roger class or higher. So if you want that aesthetic, go for it. You know, why not? I'm personally doing it too, and I really like it. I really like the, the whole little animation that pops up when you get a Charizard class. So I feel you, if you feel that way too. And that's it. If you have any questions regarding curry hunting, whether it's the setup, the actual hunt, you know, I'll be answering all the comments I see with questions. Um, and if you enjoyed the video and thought it was helpful, feel free to click the like button down below and feel free to click the subscribe button as well. If you're new here and you're like, you know what, this fox guy, shout out to you for giving us this tutorial. Thank you for enlightening me about this whole curry hunting, you know, shablam. Um, recently, it seems that it's, it's starting to get in a little uprising after the uh, Japanese shiny hunter got a shiny hatchroom with his method. A lot of people seem to, you know, have caught attention of it. And I'm really happy for that because I've had this hunt on my mind for like three months now. I've been hunting it for about three weeks. So I'm super happy that it seems to be catching on. I'm super happy my friends are joining me on this hunt as well. And uh, yeah, happy hunting, guys. Good luck. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.